SpaceX has revived the Starbase launch pad. A series of spectacular ground testing is back underway over the past week, proving the readiness for the second Starship's orbital flight. Do you think we'll be able to have a late August launch? Let's find out in today's episode of Great SpaceX. First off, this seems to be excessive venting at the launch site. In the beginning, it looked like testing the chilling system of the pad for prop loading, but after that, there was pretty massive liquid nitrogen. This is said to be not intentional, instead it might be a valve refusing to close, but it was probably not so bad. In fact, the right humidity will make a regular amount of nitrogen look like this. This is unlikely to be related to an accident, but on Sunday, a huge tank was moved to the launch site. So far, its purpose is unclear. It looks like a very high-pressure air tank. Hopefully, it'll be installed in the right place soon. Putting that aside, before everything happened, the Raptor Boost Quick Disconnect had been tested up to seven times on the OLM. This test of the startup system is meant for the outer 20 Raptor engines which have been completely replaced after the Starship inaugural flight test. It now tests the plumbing to make sure the pipes are clear for getting stuff to the RBs for startup. Besides that, one thing the RQD purchase show is just how much energy is required to get the turbos spinning at the speeds they need in order to start the engines. You can imagine how fast those turbos spin when blasted with that much pressure. Most importantly, this means it's alive. I mean, the OLM was never dead, but it sure was in a coma for quite a while. Not only that, on Wednesday, the water deluge system also experienced the first powerful purge test. Let's hear that majestic sound. Specifically, on Wednesday, the company conducted some tests on the high-pressure gas systems for the water deluge system, which I've got to say is a pretty impressive amount of air pressure. It's possibly not the only test, but they're also purging any FODs, or foreign object and debris, from the system as well as testing the systems without water to see how it fares. Consider it in a real flight. That's about 15 seconds worth of nitrogen pressure at full force, not counting the drop-off at the end. That should take care of around 8 to 10 seconds of Raptors firing on the OLM before clamp release. And if you're wondering why there's nitrogen here, SpaceX employs a blend of water and gaseous nitrogen to effectively deprive flames of the oxygen necessary for their combustion. This method helps prevent the accumulation of oxygen and methane, thereby mitigating the formation of an explosive mixture within the launch pad area. By eliminating the presence of these combustible elements, the risk of accidental ignition is significantly reduced. The combination of water and nitrogen in this system ensures a safer environment by minimizing the potential for fire and explosion hazards. By employing this method, explosive gas mixtures can be rapidly neutralized beneath the launch pad, swiftly extinguishing any remaining fires. And finally, we're expecting Booster 9 to be transported to the launch site soon for its intense but promising tests. But regardless of how the timeline will go, SpaceX continues to spend heavily on the development of Starship. According to CNBC, the valuation of Elon Musk's SpaceX hit nearly $150 billion following a share sale by existing investors announced last week. SpaceX has an agreement with new and existing investors to sell up to $750 million in stock from insiders at $81 a share, according to a copy of a purchase offer sent by CFO Brett Johnson on Thursday, which CNBC obtained. The company did not announce a raise of new capital at this time, with the purchase offer representing a secondary sale of existing shares. Musk in April said the company does not anticipate needing to raise funding to further bolster the programs for Starship, Starlink, and other initiatives. SpaceX typically performs these secondary rounds about twice a year to give employees and other company shareholders a chance to sell stock. The new share price represents an increase of about 5% from its previous secondary sale at $77 each at a valuation of about $140 billion. SpaceX did not respond to a CNBC request for comment on the purchase offer. SpaceX continues to rank as one of the most valuable private companies in the world, classifying it as a centicorn or hectacorn, a $1 billion unicorn, 100 times over. 
or at least in this case 140 to 150 times over. The company has established a near monopoly on the US satellite launch market thanks to its workhorse Falcon rockets and the struggles of rivals to field operational rockets to compete. Last month, SpaceX landed an orbital rocket booster for the 200th time and has launched 48 times so far this year, putting the company at a blistering average of a launch every four days. Starship is hoped to be the future of SpaceX. And for our last bit of news, India successfully launched a robotic lunar lander on July 14th, setting up the nation for its second attempt to soft land on the moon. The Chandrayaan-3 spacecraft lifted off on an LVM-3 heavy lift rocket from Satish Dhawan Space Center at 5.05 a.m. Eastern Friday as scheduled. Live footage showed the three-stage rocket with two strap-on side boosters soaring into the air with bright yellow exhaust shooting out of its first-stage engines. The Indian Space Research Organization, or ISRO, declared the launch a success shortly after the deployment. Congratulations, India. Chandrayaan-3 has started its journey towards moon. Let us wish all the best for the Chandrayaan-3 craft to make its further orbit racing maneuvers and travel towards moon. Chandrayaan-3, consisting of a propulsion module, Vikram lander, and the small Pragyan rover, is now on a fuel-efficient three-week-long journey that will see it continually raise its current elliptical Earth orbit and eventually perform a translunar injection maneuver. It's scheduled to arrive in lunar orbit on August 5th. Once in lunar orbit, the propulsion module will be jettisoned. The Vikram lander will begin an autonomous descent expected on August 23rd or 24th to a targeted landing site near the lunar south pole. The landing site is located 69.37 degrees south latitude and 32.35 degrees east longitude. The ISRO chose the prime landing site using high-resolution photographs and data from Chandrayaan-2 orbiter, and NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. A successful Chandrayaan-3 landing will make India the fourth country in the world to achieve a lunar landing, following the US, the former Soviet Union, and China. The mission would also be the first to land near the lunar south pole. No previous moon mission has landed at a lower latitude. The three main objectives of the mission are to safely land on the lunar surface, collect data, and conduct a series of scientific experiments to learn more about the moon's composition. Chandrayaan-3 was developed by ISRO and is a two-module configuration. The 2,148-kilogram propulsion module and a 1,752-kilogram lander named Vikram, which also carries the 26-kilogram Pragyan rover. The propulsion module will carry the lander and rover from injection orbit to 100 kilometers above the moon. Once on the site, the Vikram lander will deploy the six-wheeled Pragyan rover via a ramp. The Solar Power Duo will carry out a set of scientific experiments for the duration of daytime at the landing site. One period of lunar daylight on the moon lasts for 14 Earth days. Without radioisotopic heater units, the spacecraft is not expected to survive the deep cold of lunar nighttime. Chandrayaan-3 is a part of a wider, renewed international interest in the moon. The mission follows six moon landing attempts in the past decade. These include China's Chang'e 3, 4, and 5 successful lunar landings, and the unsuccessful Israeli Bereshit, Indian Chandrayaan-2, and Japanese Hakuto-R Mission 1 missions. Well, folks, that wraps up our show for today. We hope you enjoyed learning more about the amazing progress over at SpaceX, as well as what's happening with Indian space. If you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. So, uh, as always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.